Welcome to Last Night, your sci-fi recap show. Last night was a thrill fest from start to finish, with the season finale of Being Human as well as exciting episodes of Lost Girl and Revolution. Joining me to review all this is Dr. Vance Hill Singer, Monster Hunter Extraordinaire. It's good to be back Miss Ang Hill. Let's start with Revolution. Obviously it's difficult to make post-apocalyptic settings seem realistic, with characters whose hair and clothing still look like they're in present-day Earth. But does it seem to you that Revolution should be trying just a little bit harder, since they're 15 years past lights out? Old habits die hard as they say. It's one thing to have one character making fun of another character's cheap suit, which may seem a little too petty for this type of world. But you can tell Revolution is aware of how they need to adapt to changing times, especially when they toss out lines like, What's a boy band? I suppose you're right. What do you think of the science, though? The lack of electricity is apparently due to a micro-machine that sucks up all electricity, like tiny little capacitors. Well, the thing about a capacitor is it can only absorb so much before it must discharge. The problem with this little mechanical virus, is it would indeed need to exist on a massive scale to absorb all the world's electricity. The main problem though, is the effect it would have on the human body. We're practically made of electrical impulses. And if those little creatures absorb electricity, then one can only imagine the chaos it would wreak upon our bodies. I can't even begin to imagine. Let's talk about the characters for a bit. The rebels capture Tom Neville and do a fairly good job of interrogating him. I thought it was going pretty poorly until I saw their real strategy unfold. Yes, it was rather stealthily accomplished. On the other hand, as good a job as they did interrogating him, they did an equally poor job of guarding him. He escaped, all on his own, and killed a priest on the way out of town. 2. Too unpardonable. At least they were able to discover the bad guy's plot. Which, I admit, is something of a mystery in itself. They have an Asir bomb. A nuclear bomb. After the world has already ended. I'm not sure if that constitutes overkill, or terminal megalomania. We'll see I'm sure. But let's move on to last night's episode of Lost Girl. They really hammered home the effects of Tamsin's internal conflict on her. She's drinking constantly now and just dropped herself into Bo's tub. While Bo was still in it. I can honestly say in all my years of monster hunting, I have never been in that situation. You've never had to hunt someone you cared about, or who cared about you? I meant I've never had a monster intrude on me while I was bathing. Oh. Well, with Bo being a succubus, I don't think she was too embarrassed. But if she hasn't guessed at Tamsin's feelings for her by now, then she's simply not paying attention. Tam Sin's feelings for Bo are the least of either of their worries at the moment. That Isaac fellow who was stalking Lauren all that time, has finally revealed himself to be the bastard behind the mass grave Dyson found. I would have liked a bit more build up I think, more exploration, more mystery surrounding this character. It would have made the reveal more dramatic I think. There's certainly enough drama at work among the fair right now. Just as Hale is voted the new Ash, the Morrigan calls for a vote of no confidence in him, and wins. Trick is abducted, as were Dyson and Lauren. And Kenzie is finally faced with what it truly means to be a human among Fae. I'm guessing next week's season finale will feature Dark Bo giving everyone a taste of what happens when you mess with her friends. Is that really what you think, will happen, or just what you hope, will happen? A bit of both. Let's move on to the season finale of Being Human. Aiden has been dropping hints for a long time now that, whatever his bond with Josh and Sally, he really does want to connect with the vampire community. It's why he told Blake about the cure despite not trusting her. And last night, we learn it may have been his real reason for turning Kenny. Vampires are truly the Lunellius monsters live. A werewolf can spend most of his life as a normal human with somewhat heightened senses. Demons can jump from body to body. But a vampire is neither a human nor a demon, and it's his loneliness that drives him. That and his hunger for blood of course. It's also why he let Kenny go at the end after he bit Nora. I thought he let Kenny go because Kenny was innocent, a victim more than a monster. Kenny is, a monster. 
He's a rabid animal who will attack anyone or anything he sees. He's Stevie and other words, and we know how they dealt with Stevie on the show. Thoughts a good point. But how could Aiden live with himself if he had just destroyed Kenny without giving him a chance? How will Kenny live with himself the next time he mindlessly feeds off whatever he sees? Another good point, unfortunately. One of three big cliffhangers last night was Josh still in wolf form after the sun had risen. We'd been waiting for weeks to see him finally change form, and now that he has, it seems he can't control it. We don't know exactly what we saw last night. Josh in wolf form definitely resembled Liam, who I am glad is finally confirmed dead, but while he's certainly different this time, we don't know how he's different. The fade to black made it seem as if he was about to attack Nora, but wolves mate for life. There's no reason why he would attack her. Speaking of mates for life, Susanna showed up at the end of the episode. Stepped out of a cab right behind Aiden on the street. I don't think she's a vampire. She could hardly be that without Aiden noticing. But her appearance will make season 4 that much more dramatic. Do you mean in terms of the mystery surrounding her return, or her affect on Aiden's relationship with Kat? Well, I do like the whole soap opera aspect of it all. Aiden already has enough relationship issues. What he has, are trust issues. I'm not a doctor, well, not a relationship doctor at least, but any relationship must be built on trust. Especially a relationship between a vampire and a human. It is well past the time when Aiden told Kat the truth about what he is. You're not wrong. Vampires who date humans always reach the point where coming clean is the only option. Usually, that point comes before she finds a dead body in your house. Oh there was simply no excuse for that. Whether Aiden should have told her before now or not, leaving a dead body to stink up the place is inexcusable. I agree. Though Sally herself has bigger problems than her reburial. Donna apparently came back as a ghost, attached to her. For only having been on screen for a very limited time, Donna has stolen perhaps the whole season for me as a character. She's very compelling to watch. And dragging Sally down to hell, which is presumably where she dragged her, will give us whole new levels of the afterlife to examine in the being human universe. Season 4 is set to be the most exciting yet. Thank you for your insights, Doctor. Anytime, Miss Anghill. And thank you all for watching last night.